We've heard it already. Minister Lauterbach mentioned it. Christoph mentioned it. Uh, Sophie is engaged in that area. Climate change is a major health threat and will be, um, will, it will be still in future. So this is something that we need to address and that we want to talk about in the next session. Um, we have addressed this topic already at the last Global Health Talk in November. We have shared 10 recommendations um, that came up from the panelists and they are available on our website and I believe they will also be, the link will be shared in the chat so that you can also see them again. And we want to take this up and follow up on this recommendation and that exchange from November in the following session on global health needs climate action. Um, and as I also, also said, we, we have a new format. Uh, we want to take discu the discussion even further. We have a new format in the Global Health Hub um, called the Catalyst Dialogue, where we call a group of experts together to bring in their diverse perspectives on one complex issue such as global health and, uh, and climate change. And we, we want to share the, the outcomes of this discussion, the ideas that come in in, in a discussion paper. And we will start this process next week with the first dialogue uh, meeting. Um, and I'm happy that we're doing this also jointly with uh, the platform called Healthy Developments, which is a very uh, great partner in this uh, discussion and learning process that we are conducting together with, uh, with the expert. And this, uh, uh, this platform is also funded and supported by the Ministry uh, for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, to, I will already announce the moderator of uh, the upcoming panel discussion, um, and I think she's uh, well chosen. I don't know who could lead this the discussion better. Maiko Foss, uh, who, who is a researcher in global health governance and also a strong ally of the Global Health of Germany. She, she's the managing director of the newly established uh, think tank, uh, the Center for Parlam um, Planetary Health Policy. And... Um, and we'll guide us through the discussion in a little bit. But before I hand over to Maike, it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome the Parliamentary State Secretary uh, to the Federal Minister for Economic Cooperation and Development, Niels Annen. It's great to have you here with us. I would like to invite you, or I would like to thank you for opening the next session with your keynote on climate change and health. And I am personally very much interested in your perspective on that complex issue and also obviously how the Ministry for Economic Development and Cooperation is dealing with it and addressing it in the different ways it can do so. So, State Secretary Ann, welcome to the stage. The floor is yours, pleasure. Oops. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for that kind introduction. It's great to see all of you. And I'm very happy to have the opportunity to address uh, you briefly. Ladies and gentlemen, 95 years ago, the Swedish Nobel Prize winner Svante Arrhenius died in Uppsala. He had demonstrated with experience experiments that as early as 1896, that mankind's increased use of fossil fuels can cause an increase in the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and an increase of global temperatures. Curiously, at the time when he made that discovery, Aaron Hughes mainly saw the potential advantages of this development from a Scandinavian perspective, maybe understandable. He hoped that it would translate into longer growing periods and greater harvest yields for his agricultural homeland, Sweden. However, ladies and gentlemen, with the knowledge of this time and his experiment, Aaron Hinius was looking at isolated phenomena only and not seeing the Earth's system. Even so, this does not mean in the least diminish his achievements, but it's interesting to see and remember his um, perspective. Yet, even today, many fall prey to the same view, and that is concerning. A century later, we are still often unable to see the full picture. A century later, we are often unable to apply systemic and complex complex uh, thinking. We are often unable to overcome the barriers separating different areas of knowledge. 
or aggregate information to turn into knowledge. And a century later, we are still often unable to translate this knowledge into concrete policies. In addition, the world is faced with multiple crises as hardly ever before. And these crises are overlapping and their consequences are mutually reinforcing. Examples, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic, Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine, and as one of the results, the energy and the food crisis. The developments they entail, they are dynamic and even dangerous, and result in a combination of multiple crises, as mentioned above and they are threatening to supersede the traditional development goals of the, I would say, our 2030 agenda. For our development cooperation, ladies and gentlemen, too, this means that we are facing a dual challenge at least. Of course, we need to press ahead with the implementation of the SDG agenda. 17 sustainable development goals, and some are very directly linked to health issues, as you all know. And of course, the Paris Climate Agreement. And at the same time, we need to prevent the current crisis from escalating further and undoing all development progress. The climate change and health nexus has been an important aspect of that debate. It has an important role to play. Because more and more frequently, our partner countries are faced with the following scenarios. Extreme weather events, such as heat, heavy rainfall, flooding typhoons, frequently damage and destroy important infrastructure, hospitals, water and energy systems, traffic routes. People are no longer adequately provided with services. There is an increase in infection rates and a shortage of drug supplies. And make no mistake, this has an impact on people's health. And that's not only physical, for example, injuries or fatalities, but it can also, and we know that in a way also from our own moderate experience with COVID-19, it can also cause psychological conditions such as stress or depression. Here again, the poor and vulnerable are especially affected. So the climate crisis, ladies and gentlemen, the climate crisis is also a health-related crisis. It has a social impact. Water scarcity and droughts lead to crop failures or complete loss of harvests, such as the ones that we are currently witnessing in Eastern Africa. In such cases, hunger and malnutrition can frequently trigger violent conflicts, displacement and migration. And that's not a theory, I can tell you from our day-to-day -day work in the BMZ. Climate change is altering habitats. Vectors such as insects and ticks find new habitats. And guess where? Also here in Germany, for instance. This is the case for the Asian bush mosquito, the Asian tiger mosquito, or the Yelamana tick. And these insects can spread dangerous viruses, such as dengue, West Nile, or Crimean Congo, hemorrhagic fever. As has already been observed in the Southern Caucasus region, in Turkey, and other parts of the world. And in future, even malaria, yellow fever, can spread to temperate climate zones as a result of global warming. Infectious diseases, resistances are spreading more and more rapidly. I don't, not, I don't need to tell you this in this, this group. Because the global population is growing, becoming more and more mobile, moving into previously undisturbed ecosystems, or engaging in more and more intensive livestock farming. This, ladies and gentlemen, is also accelerating biodiversity loss and climate change. I want to mention another important aspect. And that aspect is that almost all new pathogens that have appeared in recent years and many of the current infectious diseases are zoonotic diseases. 
Fighting these diseases is causing healthcare systems considerable damages. And again, we're talking about SARS, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic. I think you know what we are talking about. And this is only a brief overview, overview that shows clearly that we need always, always take a joint approach to the environment, the climate and the health, people of, uh, the health of people and animals. Um, I, I listened to the discussion and I saw that one of the questions was precisely uh, directed to the question of the One Health approach. So the One Health approach that addresses the health of people, animals and the environment as one to our minds is the most effective and efficient approach to protect health and also counter climate change. And in this context, we also welcome the joint initiative by Great Britain and Egypt to establish the Alliance on Transformative Action on Climate and Health as a platform for knowledge, knowledge exchange. And my ministry, Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, ladies and gentlemen, committed some 276 million euros in 2021 for projects that are fully or partially dedicated to the One Health approach. We are convinced that we need to find systemic answers. And that is why these funds will be used to finance a broad range of measures. This includes measures to, find, to fight neglected tropical diseases, the management of biodiverse conservation areas, developing climate strategies for the health systems of our partner countries. And we saw how important that is during the rollout of the vaccine campaign. We need to invest in the health systems of our partners. We need to invest in energy efficient rehabilitation of hospitals or measures to improve farm animal health. At COP26 in November 2021, Germany committed to implementing climate resilient and sustainable health systems. That is why BMZ is, seeing, is taking that task to assist our partner countries in implementing the systems. With regard to the multilateral level, I would like to add that BMZ is supporting Act A, the largest vaccination campaign in history. And the campaign is aimed to saving lives and strengthening health systems that have been heavily burdened by the COVID-19 pandemic. And that is true for the least developed countries, but we see that the burden is also very heavy on, the, on, on middle income countries, even on developed countries. So to add and to conclude, let me mention also the health sector itself. We're not talking that much about it, but also the health sector is contributing to climate change. Some four to five percent of global green gas emissions are caused by supply change in the health sector. And I believe this also needs to be addressed. So, ladies and gentlemen, to summarize briefly, systemic and complex strategies are all about building bridges for the health of our planet between climate finance and biodiversity, conversation, conservation, <laughs> strengthening health and social systems, climate resilient agriculture and livestock, farming, and of course, sustainable supply chain. And I want to add that what we are facing right now, and I mentioned that before, are multiple crises. We have a special responsibility. Um, the replenishment has been mentioned in the discussion that I had an opportunity briefly to listen to. And I think it's not a secret that also in our rich developed countries, our budgets are under pressure, talking about official development assistance, of course. But this is not only true for Germany. And we are proud that with Act A and other pledges, also for the Global Fund, we could keep up you know, to, to the responsibility that, that we have as, as still prosperous and rich countries. Many of the crises I addressed today somehow disappeared from public view because of Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. And I believe what the Global Health Hub is doing in 
terms of bringing all the actors of the health sector together is very important. But we need your voice as well for the public discussion in Germany. Because for everything that we are doing, every replenishment that we are able to provide, we need majorities, and that means we need the acceptance of our parliaments and publics. And with the increased economic pressure also on Germany itself, Chancellor was sitting with trade unions and business representatives yesterday, that's not going to be easier. So the argument that we can make together needs also to be always an argument in favor of our own prosperity and our own health here in Germany. We know that everything is interconnected, but that sometimes gets lost in translation in the public debate. So um, we are happy to be part of that important discussion. It's a great opportunity. We are um, very happy to have the opportunity to address you. But I, I really want to leave you with the expectation that we came a long way, but the crisis is really making it clear that we need to be louder. Uh, and so my expectation is not only to have the debate among experts, but please, please also raise your voice uh, in our own interest and especially uh, to be able to follow our responsibilities to implement the SDGs. This is an extraordinary time uh, for policymakers, for health experts, uh, for international NGOs. Um, um, and so um, I hope that everybody understands the urgency of this debate. So thank you very much. I wish the discussion a uh, lot of success and hope for your understanding that because Parliament is in session, I mentioned that before, I cannot stay longer with you. Thank you very much.